Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host with the biggest Zawordo of the most, Avery LR32, and destroy the ever living boo boo staying off that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1500 ladder and as we create Zawordo. Yeah, we're going to be abusing that a little bit in this video. But, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Arcana Force. Skip your opponent's turn with the Zawordo deck profile, and maybe you'll occasionally bust out uh, Arcana Force, the Chaos Ruler. So, um, first and foremost, I want to get some things out of the way. I'm sure some people are already typing in the comments without even listening to the video. Avery, this build's garbage, blah, 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 blah. I, I swear some people play my videos on mute because then they comment something that I discussed in the video. But regardless, <laughs> um, this is very much a work in progress. This is very much a project deck that I really want to make as competitively viable as possible. Um, the majority of people that saw the new support for Arcana Force out of Supreme Darkness started thinking, well, maybe we'll get the second wave of support in whatever our next core set is after Supreme Darkness, where we see the other tarot cards for the Arcana Force. Like, um, we have, like, of course, the Lovers, we have uh, the Hierophant, but then, like, I don't think we have the uh, merchant or whatever it's called, the, the hermit merchant, whatever it's called, you know what I mean? But the hermit, like, I don't think we have that tarot card yet. So there is hopefully more support coming down the pipeline. The thing is though, is that we get Supreme Darkness in January. And in case y'all haven't heard me say it a million times at this point, I am going to the YCS in February of 2025 which will be YCS Orlando. And I would love to play Arcana Force. I would love to get a feature match where I'm turn skipping the opponent with the world and just crapping all over the venue table. Like, I, I would love that. That would be so funny. So let's go ahead and go through this because I want to get the community's thoughts on how we can make this deck better because I feel like with this new support, there is a spark. There is something here with this stuff and even the reveal of goddess of duality which is why i waited to make this video because i wanted to see what the whole set list of supreme darkness was and sure enough we got some generic coin tossing related support um the hierophant is an absolute busted card uh arcana spread is insane the wave of light is nuts um so there is a spark of something here so let's just go through it and uh, we'll, we'll talk about it as we go so um, starting off here, I actually want to talk about these uh, few cards here last. So let, let's just go through these first. So starting off uh, with three copies of Arcana Force, the Hierophant. So you can discard this card for the rest of this turn. Your opponent can activate cards or effects when an Arcana Force monster monsters is summoned to your field, which is insane because remember all of the Arcana Force monsters with their coin tossing effects happen on summon. So if you pitch this and then you start your combos, the opponent can't say like Valor your world. They can't ash blossom like say an arcana force monster had an effect on summon to search uh, they couldn't ash it they can't imperm you right so this card's really good so when it's summoned you toss a coin and then apply whatever effect so heads you special summon a level four lower arcana force monster from your deck with a different name from the monsters you control and in your grave and then tails you special summon arcana force monster from the deck to the opponent's field which is kind of like a gen and ken package with uh empress because if you summon this and for whatever reason you don't have light barrier up which yes i know this deck really revolves around its field spell you get rid of this then you're kind of pissing your pants um but you can use this flip tails summon out say like empress to the opponent's field empress has to activate since it was summoned so all your triple attack cards are live now so we'll talk about that little combo in a second um next up here we're playing three copies of the sun so if a card if a card not a monster or whatever it's just if a card if a card that has a coin tossing effect is on the field doesn't even have to be on your side of the field you could special summon this card from your hand you don't use the effect of the sun once per turn if this card summon toss a coin head set a spell from your deck that has a coin tossing effect tails destroy all cards in the spell and trap zone so it's either a heavy storm or you get to set a spell i've seen people like trolling online being like this is cup of a support and it is but i think what a lot of people forget is that light barrier only lets you choose the coin tossing effect for your arcana force monsters so cup of ace is dog shit in this deck so typically you're going to be setting the uh, arcana reading off of this because then reading will get you to the world you'll use the effect of the reading to banish it from the grave to gain an additional normal summon that's why you're playing the lovers so yeah uh three copies of the fiend so it's literally an elemental hero captain gold you ditch it to add a field spell so in this case you're adding light barrier from deck or grave to hand um and then if it's summoned you toss a coin apply the effect heads when attack is declared involving this card you can target one monster on the field destroy it and if you do inflict 500 damage to its controller tails if an attack is declared involving this card destroy all monsters on the field you only care about the fact that you can discard it and then its effect searches you light barrier that that's really all you care about here 
Uh, we're playing one copy of the Lovers. So when it's summoned, you toss a coin. Uh, Tails, you can't tribute summon Arcana Force monsters. But then if you hit Heads, it can be treated as two tributes for the tribute summon of, of an Arcana Force monster. So you summon this out usually off of like Hierophant. And then reading, you'll banish it from the grave. Gain an extra normal summon. So you'll double tribute the Lovers to summon the world. Use its effect for Heads. During your end phase, you can send two monsters you control to the graveyard. Skip your opponent's next turn. If you hit Tails during your opponent's draw phase, add the top card of their graveyard to their hand. Yeah, uh, no, we, we want to be hitting heads, Sugar Boo Bear. Uh, last but not least here for the monsters before we talk about basically the bricks um, is Goddess of Duality. So this is just recently revealed in Supreme Darkness. This card's actually really good. So if this card's normal or special summon, you add a monster from your deck to your hand that has a coin tossing effect. <laughs> That's broken, except itself. Who cares? During your main phase, you can toss a coin and call it. If you call it right, the attack of all monsters you currently control become doubled until the end of this turn. If you call it wrong, send as many monsters you control as possible to the graveyard. If you do draw one card you're never going to be using its coin flipping effect. You just want to summon it so that you can search for literally any monster in your deck. So like you could search for the sun and then special summon it since goddess is a coin tossing effect. So like you can go summon, add sun, sun's effect, special summons. Uh, and then from there, you've got two bodies. You can either do full Fiendsmith combo. Uh, you could go into like maybe a masquerade and climb into a little knight or make, you know, a link to really whatever it is you want these two bodies to become. There's a lot to be explored with just that little interaction, being able to summon and search the sun and have a free extender now let's talk about the bricks so uh the empress so if this card summon toss a coin heads each time your opponent normal summons or sets a monster you can special summon an arcane force monster from your hand tails each time your opponent normal summons or sets a monster send a card from your hand to the graveyard so I, i've seen rulings back and forth on this and light barrier is a bit of an older card it really needs a reprint to be honest with updated uh card text but the way that Light Barrier is worded is that during the standby phase, you toss coin if the results is tails, the following effects are negated until your next standby. So when you summon an Arcana Force monster, choose which effect to apply without tossing a coin. If an Arcana Force monster destroys opponent's monster by battle, you gain light points equal to the destroyed monster's original attack. We don't care about that. Hierophant summons Empress to the field. You are making the summon happen. Therefore, there's right now kind of a back and forth going of whether or not if Light Barrier's up, you get to pick the effect of Empress. So the way that I would rule it, which fun fact, I'm actually a certified judge, like I could go to a regional and judge the event. Um, the way that I would rule it is that since you are making the summon happen, you're using the effect of your monster to summon one to the opponent's field. You're making the summon happen based on this old text on light barrier so you would get to choose the effect of empress this is good because that means you could pick tails so every time you're summoning a monster you're ripping a card out of the opponent's hand and then like i said just it being summoned no matter what the coin flip uh result is your talents and thrust and if you decide to main deck thrust are going to be online um emperor is its effect is irrelevant it just gives your monsters a 500 attack point boost if you hit heads and then they lose 500 if you hit tails problem is it's also a brick you don't ever want to see empress or emperor you don't want to see desperado its effect is irrelevant the only thing you need to know is that if it's sent to the graveyard you can add a level seven or lower monster that has a coin tossing effect from your deck to your hands so you're playing foolish you can foolish this or like you can pitch it with say like wave of light to pitch this and then get the search of course the world basically being your win condition because it's just so searchable and you just drop this out with light barrier then at the end phase tribute two monsters which some people think that you have to have the two bodies to tribute or one other body plus the world on summon you don't you just need to have them by the end phase of the turn so with the world up you only need to commit one of the body because then you tribute itself and then the other monster dark ruler is literally just played because if you make chaos ruler you can summon out the dark ruler um it can be special summoned from the hand by sending three monsters you control to the graveyard it can't be special summoned by the ways and then when it's special summon, you toss coin gain the effect so heads it can make a second attack during each battle phase but if it does so using this effect you change it to defense mode at the end of the battle phase its battle position can't be changed till the end of your next turn and then tails if this cards destroyed destroy all cards on the field it's 4,000 attack and events but again it's a brick so you're essentially playing five bricks in the deck which is not good and i want to figure out some way to cut down on this i'm really tempted to cut out dark ruler like i'm starting to think chaos ruler isn't all that great but let's go ahead and dive into the spells here playing three reading three talents one terraforming one foolish one prosperity because you just have a lot of free extra deck space in here um three arcana spread one call by three wave of light uh three light barrier and then three evenly match the evenlies can really be whatever it is that you want them to be um these could be hand traps these these could be thrust these could be anything it's literally i put these in here because the deck is terrible going second so i wanted something to at least somewhat help with going second but these are just flex spots like 
I honestly don't know what else these cards could really be. Um, for the extra deck, we're playing three Chaos Ruler, one Zeus, one Sky Crisis, uh, one Access Code. I actually need to reorganize these. One Unicorn, one Phoenix, and one Little Knight. The reason why I reorganize these is because you have a lot of free extra deck space. From Arcana Force all the way over to Little Knight, you can play whatever other extra deck cards you want. Like, you have so much free space, it's crazy. So right now, I'm playing Underworld Goddess, Condemned Dark Lord, Hit Potion again, uh, Moon in the Closed Heaven, IP, and then uh, Herald of the Mirage Lights, because it's two monsters with the same type and attribute except tokens, and it's a fairy. Everything, all your monsters are light fairies, um, which is really good, which means you can also play Condemned Dark World. So this is an interesting card. So it takes two fairies. You can tribute summon fairy monsters that require two tributes. By banishing two monsters from your graveyard instead of tributing, it's still treated as a tribute summon. So instead of having to have two bodies on the board or like having to establish lovers, if you can make the Condemned Dark Lord, use Reading, banish it for the extra normal summon. This is a light fairy, so you just banish two monsters from your graveyard and summon the world and then use the effect, tribute the world, and then Condemned Dark Lord. I feel like that there's really something here with Condemned Dark Lord that nobody's really talking about. Um, and then, like I said, all the other stuff's just free. Hippo Shinigans in here because you play fucking light monsters. The side deck is just cards that you could potentially play. You're playing all light fairies. Like, you could maybe play Hecatrice with Valhalla. Valhalla can special summon a fairy from hand as long as you control no monsters. And it's a soft once per turn. So, like, if you have three up, then you can just keep using it multiple times. Um... So yeah, these are just different cards and ideas you could play. Like you could play Armageddon Knight, so you could normal summon it to dump the Desperado and then get a search. But this is really what I've sort of come up with right now. Um, I'm sure some people are going to say, Avery, not every deck's meant to be competitive. Some decks are meant to be casual. I get that. But I want to take this to a fucking YCS and just the world lock people and just make them skip their turn and make them get pissed. Like I would love to do that, especially with how toxic this current format is. Snake Eyes, Azamina, and Fiendsmith everywhere up everybody's buttholes for no good reason. Um, I, I just want to chill out and have some fun until we, we get into a better format. And this goddess card is fucking insane. Like people are sleeping on this card. Um, but this is what I'm working with right now. The argument can be made. This is something else that's kind of bouncing around in my noggin is that I almost feel like if you're going to be playing these, what are we on? Two, three, four, five bricks. Maybe if you cut Dark Ruler, then you're down to four. Maybe cut Desperado, you're down to three. Because Foolish on its own, even just Foolishing a um, Arcana Force monster isn't bad. Because Arcana spread, if you hit Tails, you special summon a monster from your graveyard that has a coin tossing effect. And if Light Barrier is up, then you can just change the effect of whatever you want. So like you can go Foolish to dump, I don't know, the Sun. And then activate Light Barrier and then have Arcana spread to summon it back from the grave. So that's a cute little interaction. Or you can just Reborn the World from the graveyard because it just says when it's summoned. It doesn't have to be normal summoned. So uh, something else I was thinking about in my mind is making it like a 60 card build with like a Fiendsmith package. Because, again, you have, like, nine free slots in your extra deck for it to be whatever you want. So if you're playing a Fiendsmith package, then you can at least commit to a Wave High King or a Desiree line. Um, and playing a 60-card build means that you're not going to be hitting the bricks as often. Uh, you could even maybe actually have some room for hand traps with cross out Designator, all that fun jazz. Um, maybe there's an argument to be made that you could play Transaction Rollback with, like, one copy of each of the Arcana traps, even though there's only two and they kind of suck. Um, but maybe there's some sort of shenanigan you could do with that. I don't know how good that would be. I don't really know if you need to play a Bridge of Salvation package because you're already playing three of the Fiend, which gets you to your field spell. You're playing three of the Goddess, which can technically get you there because you can search Fiend. You've got Terraforming. You've got, uh, Hierophant, which can, I guess, maybe get you there depending on the board state. Um... Yeah, you you have like even wave of light I think can get you there. Yeah, because you add arcana force monsters That's another way to get to the fiend So I feel like you got plenty of ways to get to your field spell as reliant as you are on it I feel like you have plenty of ways to get there Again though the problem also becomes if you don't have the field spell and you don't see access to it How are you playing the game? And so I feel like that that's where maybe you have to cut back on some of the Arcana Force stuff. Like maybe play like a six to nine card package of Arcana Force cards and throw in some sort of other supplemental engine. Kind of like what we saw Jesse Cotton do with Crystal Beast where it was a Crystal Beast deck with a Snake Eyes engine. Um, so maybe like we do like a Snake Eye or a, a Arcana Force deck with like a Snake Eyes engine or a Snake Eyes deck with an Arcana Force engine. I'm sure some people don't want to fucking hear that. But if you're trying to make something as competitively viable as possible, you got to mix in with whatever you have access to. 
um, you know, maybe with the new support, you just make it more consistent to get to Light Barrier and the world, and that's all that you play, right? Um, but I wanted to throw this out at the community. This has been something I've been messing around with like the past couple weeks or so. Uh, I know that this video was kind of long, but I really wanted to explain everything in depth here and get everybody's thoughts. But guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. How can we make this deck better? I really want to see what people come up with. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.